Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello and welcome to Rogue Trader. Today I'm doing a stock analysis update on Cranswick PLC. Look at my videos, you'll see I did a very detailed video on Cranswick five months ago and then an even more detailed video ten months ago. Look at those if you want to really dig down into the detail, but here I'm just doing a stock analysis update. A quick whistle stop tour and Cranswick are the UK's largest pork and poultry processors. They process a third of all UK pigs and 4% of UK chickens which is 1.4 million birds a week. In future growth prospects for this company as they focus on expanding their chickens business. Revenues comes from poultry and 30% from pork which is uh, sold to say butchers and 38% of their revenue is from convenience, which is things like sausages and sausage rolls, which gets sold in supermarkets. UK retail is 79% of their revenue, and they have some export and some manufacturing for other people. This company has been superbly managed for a long period of time. Every year, in fact, going back further beyond 2014, they've just increasingly grown the, the, grown the business in a very impressive way. And when we looked at their asset and debt, that was also a very impressive profile. And it was notable that they tend to splurge out, say, 100 million on improving strategic areas of the business. But then over a period of years, they then allow that debt to be digested into the company leading to a stronger company and they wait until they've digested their previous growth spurts before they embarking on the next phase of growth. Their net income history was excellent and they got a 25% COVID boost from everyone rushing to the supermarkets during lockdown. And you can see that as well as the COVID boost in supermarkets, their strategy of focusing on poultry is playing off and we do see here the significant growth in the poultry sector and I bought my Cranswick in on the 24th of May last year however they were then hit by several crises first was the labour shortage which is where because of Brexit there was a shortage of slaughterhouse workers a lot of which were Polish but actually the government did step in to help alleviate that a bit with new visa schemes, but that was definitely a drag on the company. Then we had the CO2 crisis, which was because of the energy crisis, which I've talked about a lot in my other videos, the price of natural gas increased a lot at the back end of last year. And the only two fertilizer plants in the UK then had to stop producing fertilizer because they were losing money because of the high gas prices. Now, these fertilizer plants produce CO2 as a byproduct. And this, le this led to a situation where there was a CO2 shortage and the slaughterhouses were going to have to close down because they couldn't stun the animals anymore. However, Boris Johnson stepped in and he essentially bankrolled the fertilizer plant so that they could produce fertilizer at a loss to help protect the production of bacon and sausages. And this was actually, this potential crisis to me was actually a real boon for the, uh, for the slaughterhouse sec sector because it showed how important it is to the UK government to keep bacon and sausages on the shelves. And this showed how important Cranswick was as a business to the UK economy and to people's happiness. Now at this difficult time though, although it was only actually a 13% drop, it was, it's, it was seemingly a time of crisis. So at that time of apparent crisis, I took a deep look into the co cost of goods of Cranswick, who are essentially all about turning soy meal and wheat feed into bacon sausage rolls and finger licking chicken to then sell in the supermarkets. They use soy feed to pe feed their pigs and wheat feed to feed their chickens and they're 30% self-sufficient in pigs and 100% self-sufficient in chickens. And then they slaughter the animals and process the meat into products to sell in supermarkets. Now, actually, in my last video, 
the price of pigs, and they're only 30% 30, 30 self-sufficient in pigs, the actual pr standard pig price was at record lows. So we see here the standard pig price, and actually it was fairly low around there, and it's at record lows now. So in terms of cost of goods, things were actually really great for Cranswick. This is actually because of the, the African swine fever, which is a disease outbreak in Germany and Eastern Europe. And that's meant that Germany and Europe can't really export most of their pigs. That means they're not importing any pigs from us, which means that in the last year, in the last few years, the UK has actually got a pig surplus. And so that's why the standard pig price is so low. And it explains why right now you can go to the supermarket, pick up five rashes of bacon for a quid. These photos I took five months ago, but I went yesterday and still the price is around the same. So anyway, back then, five months ago, the standard pig price was down. So there's no worries about the costs of the pigs that they're slaughtering. And I went onto the DEFRA website where they actually do publish the current costs of feed meals. And I'd found back then that the actual the price hadn't really gone up that much anyway. So no worries here. So when I did that video, I figured that although we know that labor costs were up because of the labor shortage and electricity and running costs were up because of inflation. Because their other because of their because their other inputs um, hadn't seen any increase in prices. I was still very happy about the health of this business. And so that's why I decided to hold on to my Cranswick. Since then, we had interim results and then similar Q3 results. And looking at the Q3 results, they did actually say that the UK pork sector continues to face operational and commercial challenges with the supply of pigs at exceeding, at times exceeding demand and processing capacity well, that's what I've just discussed about the European swine flu crisis and how that's made the standard pig price really low in the UK. But they also do highlight acute shortage of skilled butchers. So this does confirm that they are feeling pressure from worker wages. But in their updates, they do essentially, they essentially say though, that their trading performance is unchanged in the current year. Now, I note that they say trading performance, i.e. revenues, and, not net, and they don't say, they don't mention profitability. But regardless, you can, regardless, you can take this that they're doing okay. You know, they're not doing badly. But I decided after the Ukraine, after the Ukraine invasion, I decided to sell half of my Cranswick. And the reason is I'm worried about the increase in the price of gas and wheat. In, when the invasion happened, there was a general stock market crash. This is the FTSE 100, but it's actually rebounded from there back to normal. And the Cranswick share price had done the same. However, I think that longer term, we now have a problem at Cranswick. We can actually see, although we're around record lows, the standard, the standard pig price has started shooting up. This data is from ResearchGate and Russia and Ukraine between them account for a third of all wheat. Plus, since the Russian invasion, the price of natural gas has shot up and high natural gas prices mean high fertilizer prices and consequently and this is wheat price that high fertilizer prices mean high wheat prices plus the reduced supply from russia and ukraine now looking at the latest defra data which is up to february and the increase in the price of wheat feed and soya bean meal feed is only actually 10 percent higher from the beginning of the year but we do kind of see a sharp increase in just the last month. And I'm fairly certain and I, I've made the I've come to the conclusion 
that we are going to see higher feed prices and that now this part of the equation here for their cost of goods is going up. So we've now got, we've already got the higher labor costs and higher running costs because of inflation. And I think now, unfortunately, we're going to see higher wheat costs and higher soy costs. Plus the standard pig price should start increasing now. The slaughterhouses have been reducing the, uh, the, the pigs they breed to, to go into to respond to the lower prices, plus the increase in the, in the costs of uh, producing those pigs. So overall now, the cost of goods don't quite work. So I've decided to sell my Cranswick, which I did back in uh, fe late February. And, and I'm expecting their share price to drop as over the next few years, the, the costs of feeding their animals uh, increases in combination with the inflation related costs of running the business. This was my portfolio before the Russian invasion. And really then Cranswick and British American Tobacco were my two major holdings. And then I had some minor holdings. And now that I've sold half my Cranswick, they are one of several minor holdings I have here where it's not going to hurt me so much when if the price goes down and i now have two oil stocks and british american tobacco as my major holdings and i still generally have a low amount number of shares as in terms of my overall portfolio so i think i've done the right thing here um i didn't want to sell all my cranswick i think the cranswick are the most excellently managed company of all the companies that i've covered and I think in the next few years, a lot of the smaller slaughterhouses are going to go to the wall and Cranswick's going to be buying them up, becoming a really gigantic force in the UK meat processing business. Um, and then I think they're going to do really well in the future once they get through these difficult few years. So I'm going to actually quite look forward to following Cranswick over the next few years. Because I think that if their management keeps their steady head, then once we get these, once we get through a couple of years of hardships with high gas and, and wheat prices, I do think they then have a lot of potential in the future. So I'll be topping them up to make them one of my major holdings again when we get to that point. Although looking at the wheat price, I think that the Russian invasion was a bridge too far for now. Please do remember that I'm no expert, just somebody blogging their investment journey for fun on the internet. Whatever you're doing, good luck with your own investments.